Hey everyone, it's Byron again. Hey everyone, it's Byron again. I'm here to testify for Jesus Christ. I wanted to do a recording of a, an incident that happened last night. Um, actually, early this morning. Today is um, May the 9th of 2014. And I was praying. I was praying for two specific things. I was praying, one, for mercy on the United States and the hand of God. And two, I was praying for people who are deceived. And by, by deception, there, there's two levels that I, I was actually thinking in my head. One is those that have been um, somehow deceived into thinking there is a way other than Jesus Christ to enter into the kingdom of God or into heaven. That particular deception I was praying for. The other one is <clears throat> within Christianity, I wouldn't necessarily go as far as to say the body of Christ, but within modern Christian thinking, there are deceptions. And one of those in specific that I had on my mind was um, a deception that Jesus Christ is the Savior, but you still have to have your faith in other things. And, and one of those is the keeping of the law. And this is a very thin line a very fine line that people need to understand. Um, if we have faith in Christ and the Holy Spirit operates in our life, we will keep the law based on the Spirit's leading and the Spirit's guidance. But, and this is covered in Roma, in, by Paul in Romans, but if while being married to Christ, we turn to the law and think that the law is um, something that we want to play with, such as in the, in the Jewish times of circumcision and, and, and these things, then we're actually committing spiritual fornication or adultery to our, um, to our Savior, Jesus Christ, the bridegroom. So it's a very thin line. Now, you ask me, well, Byron, what do I do? I know the law is holy. I know that it's good. Well, you should also know that if the law was everything that people make it out to be, you would not have needed Jesus Christ because you would have been able to fulfill the law and enter into the kingdom of heaven without Christ. The problem runs into is that people don't understand the difference between being shown by the law the issues within their life, but also how powerless the law is to deal with those issues. Only Jesus Christ and sending the Holy Spirit and the working of the Holy Spirit can we you know, accomplish the law. So it's a very thin line. There are some people that want to uh, claim Jesus Christ as their Savior and say, and here's all these other things that I must do. <laughs> and I'm not saying that you won't do them, but by following Jesus Christ, but, but, but if the law, if the keeping of the law was what saved mankind, and if the keeping of the law or focusing on the law is your success in your life, you don't need Christ. But if through trials and times, you learned, you know what, I've not kept the law. I find it difficult to keep the law. Matter of fact, I've joined the rest of humanity and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Therefore, I need Jesus Christ. Once you have moved over and become bound to Jesus Christ, don't go back and say, and now I'm going to go back to who I should have died to, which is the law. And that's found in, it's very clear in, in Romans. And, and Paul even uses a, uh, an example of a, a, of a lady that was married to her husband. And if the husband is still alive, how can she be remarried. Well, the only way for that remarriage is for someone to die. Well, 
if the husband, the original husband, was the law, and we know that the law is good and holy and will not die, then the person who's married to the law must die. And in coming to Christ in our salvation, we come to Christ and we're dead. We die and we're raised in newness of life, a new creature in Jesus Christ. So it's a very thin line that, that you walk when you, when you want to talk about keeping the law. When you want to talk about the keeping of the law but also being married to Christ. And there's, you can't be married to Jesus Christ and continue to go back over there and flirt with the law. You know, the, in, in Romans as well, Paul writes, you know, if the Gentiles who by nature keep the things of the law, to them they are a law unto themselves. Well, <laughs> I'm a Gentile now saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. If I keep the law without the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit working in my life, then that would put, that would put me in a situation where I can have my eyes on Jesus. I can keep the law, but not focus on the law, merely focus on Jesus Christ. So it's a very fine line. And, and that's, I believe it the, the the root of powerless Christianity is having faith in Jesus Christ at one point in time for salvation, but losing or setting the compartmentalizing that faith and placing it on the shelf somewhere to then turn and play around with faith in well I've got to do this, I need to do that, my it, it, that's not the way the Bible's written. That's the way people understand the Bible to be written. Because sometimes you can read the Bible through a set of glasses that lean you into a certain direction. But if you totally understand the full message given, you'll see that Jesus Christ would not have come if that law was powerful enough to save you. It was not. So... I, mean, so I didn't know I was going to go into all that, but I just wanted to talk about deception a little bit. So, <clears throat> in prayer, I was praying for mercy on the United States. And in the, in the setting or in the, in the process of me praying, I, I could see myself like in a group of people in a church, and we were all down on our knees begging for mercy from God. And then, as this was occurring, I saw a, a dead man. And he, but he was standing, and he had a scarf on his head. Now, I'm going to use this example not to lead someone to think that that scarf has anything to do with a military. But I can tell you, the scarf was light blue, or what referred to in the military as infantry blue. Sometimes you see people with a, a scarf around their neck uh, in the color guard and things like that. This was actually on his head. And the man that was standing there, who I knew to be dead, his face was decayed. And I couldn't help but get the idea, I'm praying for mercy on dead people. And you know, Jesus Christ said one time, let the dead bury the dead. You know, come follow me and let the bed, dead bury the dead. Um, right now, there are people in the United States and potentially even in the world who claim to have faith in Jesus Christ. But one of the deceptions that is currently happening is that people also have faith in the next election. They also have faith in the, the goodness of all the people and that the goodness of all the people is going to rise up and somehow restore or save this nation or anything like that. Let me, I want to make this clear, and, and I'm not a, you know, television type personality. I'm not a person that just draws people to listen. But I do hear from the Lord, and I'm, I'm telling you, in my prayer last night for mercy on this nation, and also for the deceived people in this nation, 
God merely just showed me dead, a dead man standing there with a decaying face. These, these things are dead. We are living among dead people. And there's only one hope, and I appreciate a comment this morning on my Facebook page because I, I use this phrase regularly and a, a friend of mine used it for me, you know. There is one hope, Jesus Christ. There is not hope in the law or the keeping of the law. There's not hope in a government. There's not hope in a civil type restoration of this nation. The hope is Jesus Christ. And if, if, you know, very honestly, if you're planning to be married to Jesus Christ, but you find yourself with your hope in other places, I would liken that into the illustration that Paul used, where if you are married to Christ and then you go and you flirt with the law, then you're adulterous. And many people would never notice adultery as being a spiritual type, but it, there is, there's a spiritual adultery. So we have one hope, and that's Jesus Christ. That's what, the, the thing that happened to me, the incident that happened to me last night, uh, I know that there are people out there that, that hope that I'm crazy. I know that there are people out there that, that hope something changes. And, and I gotta tell you that I would love for that to be the case, but in every, circumstance in which God shows me something I'm seeing a different thing uh, just just a completely different thing so I uh, we, we need to have one hope and that's Jesus Christ uh, all the other good ideas are merely good ideas but there's one hope Jesus Christ hey I've, I was going to close out that video but I referenced this a part, and it's in Romans chapter 7. I wanted to read that, and as I read that, I wanted to explain um, what Paul is actually saying here. Uh, so, and Paul's talking about, you know, in, in Romans, he's building a foundation. He's destroying a foundation and building a foundation uh, in Jesus Christ. But let me read Romans chapter 7. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to read this one portion here, dealing with the analogy of the husband uh, being married to Christ, but also married to another. But let's let's read this, and so that I can maybe go through and explain uh, how I understand it, and that might be helpful. But in Romans chapter seven, verse one, we'll start out. Know ye not, brethren? For I speak to them who know the law. I speak to you guys, you all who understand and know the law. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. So. As long as a man is alive here on this earth, he must, or he, he is, the law has dominion over him. For the woman with ha which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he, her husband, liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So he's saying that divorce would be legal and I mean, if, if the husband dies, a remarriage, setting up for it to say a remarriage is possible. So, this, so then if, while her husband liveth, she is married to another man, she, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my children, ye are also become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should marry to it should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So Paul's Paul's illustration is, and he's you know he's, he's speaking of Jews, but there's Christians who want to go and live by the law, as if it were. If, as if they were a Jew. And then there's Jews that actually converted to Christianity back in these days that wanted to, to teach people circumcision and, and follow these points and all that stuff. There's a record in Acts of that. <coughs> also in Galatia. I mean Galatians. But Paul is merely saying in this, and if you get your Bible out and think about what I'm saying, you'll understand it. If, if I am at one point in time married 
to the law. Let's say that I was a Jew and I was married to the law and the law had dominion over me as long as I lived. But if I died and was raised to Jesus Christ, to be remarried to Jesus Christ, then I am in a whole different marriage. I am separate from that previous marriage because I myself died and was raised in newness of life. But if I, in this marriage, go back and flirt with the law, play with the law, or anything of that matter, then I'm an adulteress. And I just wanted to make sure that point was understood because that's what Paul is saying and uh, I believe the Bible. So uh, just sharing that with you to, to maybe it'll be helpful. Thanks.